Hey guys, Pat here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And so out here at the property, we're putting in a couple of little fun things for the family. And today I'm going to put in a tetherball pole. And I got to looking online and seeing some of the stuff that you can get out there. And it's pretty cheap. <laughs> uh, the poles don't look like they're that rigid. I could be wrong. But uh, I thought I would just put something that's a little more permanent and a little something that's going to be pretty robust. At any rate, I'll kind of show you what I got going on here. So this is the basic plan that we're going to be going with. Uh, from what I understand, and I'm surprised that, that there is regulatory <laughs> uh, specifications on a tetherball pole. So the pole itself is supposed to be two and three eighths of an inch, which is when you buy water pipe, this stuff down here, it's two and three eighths outside diameter and two inch on the inside. So if you go to do something like this, uh, these typically come in 10 foot lengths. These are threaded on each end. And these pipes are typically 10 feet long, but you can buy them by the foot um, these things are like 14 and something odd cents for per foot anymore. It's uh, prices have gone out of sight. But anyway, a stand, you, if you're looking for a regulatory size pole for a tetherball pole, it's just two inch water pipe. Uh, you could probably use two inch uh, electrical conduit as well. Uh, and if I was a smarter guy, I would have probably I ordered these special because uh, they didn't have them in stock there at the store but uh, you know if looking back if I had my druthers these are more expensive than the conduit and the conduit will work just as just as well as these so anyway we have what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna bore a three foot hole and I'm gonna put six inches of uniform gravel in uh, to allow the pipe for drainage and then I'm going to cut the pipe off at two and a half feet and then I'm gonna have a coupling that's gonna be right at ground elevation and I'm gonna put NICs on the pipe so I can remove this top section this is gonna be the pole and I'll be able to remove that in the winter time when it's not gonna be used and then just put a cap on this and this will be at ground level um, that'll make it easier for lawn mowing and and this that and other things so at any rate uh, the 6 8 and 10 foot from what I understand 10 foot is the regulation height and 8 foot and 6 foot is depending on the height of your players so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at 10 feet but I'm also gonna drill a hole at 8 and 6 feet in the event that we ever want to change that what I have here is I just found a bolt, a couple of the things I didn't have to buy. <laughs> I had to cut some th more threads on this to get the two and three eighths inch width to penetrate in, into the pipe and so I can tighten this up. And I just had this, uh, this fitting here. I've had it for years laying around. And so if I ever just want to change the height of the pole, I can just unbolt it go to a different hole and voila we're there this is a 3 8 inch uh, bolt and it looks like it's about four inches long um, it just has to be enough to clear the half inch or whatever this is and a two and three eighths inch pipe so a three inch bolt would be plenty to make this happen and next I have a coupler for this what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this ground height so the concrete will go up to the very top of this. I'll put anti-seize lubricant in here. And then the two foot, two and a half foot section of pipe is gonna go in the ground into the concrete. And when I remove the pipe or the winter time or whatever, uh, if I wanna mow, I can just unscrew it or mow around it. <laughs> uh, I can actually put a threaded plastic cap in the top of this uh, to keep dirt and everything else getting into the hole. So we got a shovel and a post hole auger. We have these two pieces of pipe. One of these pipes I'm going to use full length and the other I'm going to cut two and a half feet off of it for the 
part that goes into the ground obviously we got a tether ball and we have a drill index uh, I'll probably need a 3 8 inch drill bit out of there a drill of course way to cut the pipe I got a cap for the top to keep keep the keep the moisture out of the uh, top of the pipe I'll also drill a hole in the bottom of the pipe that actually works for the tether ball because I don't want this filling up with water and uh, freezing so I have the op option to leave it in the ground all winter long it's galvanized it'll be fine or I can take it up but if I leave it in the ground I'm going to want to have a way for the water to drain out of the pipe but I'm also going to have uh, put gravel in the bottom of the hole in order to uh, allow the pipe that's in the ground to actually drain itself as well so I think I got everything I need other than the ambition we're ready to go okay we're over here in the box truck and I want to measure off two, two feet six inches and we'll take the pipe cutter and cut this pipe off at two and a half feet and you know before I get that totally cut off it would be a lot easier for me just to go ahead and put that coupling on here I want this fairly tight so this doesn't spin off accidentally in in the ground which it it won't because the concrete is going to key in this right here and it's not going to allow it to turn um, if I also was worried about it turning I could after tightening this I could drill a hole in here and put a through bolt through there and it would never it would never come off but I'm not too worried about it I mean that would be pretty cheap insurance to go ahead and put a bolt through there but I'm not going to worry about it. I think uh, if I, the concrete is going to set up just fine around these ridges right here where I don't have to worry about this spinning off and the concrete is going to be all along the pipe um, so the pipe's not going to turn. I guess the other thing I could also do is I could put pins through a couple of pins through here and set this into concrete so it would never turn. Well, you guys caught me in the middle of changing my mind. It wouldn't hurt to uh, just take a few minutes and put a hole in this to put this ready rod in here. And that will be a little more insurance to keep the pipe from actually turning and keep it uh, solidified in that concrete. And that could be anywhere on the pipe. I think maybe I'll put it in the middle. Drill a pilot hole first. it'll fit in the hole if not I'll have to just kind of force it in there it'll probably be off beef up anyway we'll finish out with the cut on our pipe I know I'm getting closer because it's starting to cut a little faster so what it's doing it's not only cutting it's pressing in the metal 
in towards the center of the pipe as well and it's getting a lot easier to turn so there's not much not as much resistance there there we go okay now that part will go in the ground just like so so now I'm just putting anti-seize around the threads of this pipe obviously you wouldn't use this if you're working with water but I'm not wanting it to seize up so I'm going to use this to keep the threads from rusting together the pipes galvanized but the threads are cut in after the pipes been galvanized so uh, as you can see there's rust here and they'll they'll continue to rust if if it's in the ground or up above ground in our case because this is where the cap is going to go I'm not going to screw the cap on I'm not going to screw it on real tight just hand tight just as a rain cap for this keep the rain out of it other thing that I'm going to do is cut a hole in the top so that will be our 10 foot mark now there's lines on the pipe here from where they galvanized it I'm going to use those lines to line up my drill and go to my 8 foot or 10 foot 6 foot and 8 foot marks I'm going to use the top of the top of the cap here there's a line right in the center of the top of the cap where they cast this and so I'm going to use that to line my drill up my drill bit and get it fairly close to center and it's not going to be perfect but I don't really care about that as long as it's close it's not exact but it's good enough okay now I'm going to go down to the 8 foot mark and while this is above ground I might as well go ahead and mount this instead of fighting or climbing a ladder and getting up to it it'll probably never leave the 10 foot mark but I want to while the pipe was on the ground and I had to drill and everything accessible I thought well why not we'll just go ahead and and uh, utilize the drill and everything while we have it handy to go ahead and tap those other holes in there just for fun so obviously I'll need to tighten this up I could cut this off but the ropes gonna be tied in here so that's not necessary um, I think I'll get a chamfer I'll just get a larger bit and just chamfer these holes to where they're not going to be rough. Okay, we're down here at the uh, site where we're going to put the tether ball hole. <laughs> I got six more inches to dig on the hole, and this is kind of cool. These are uh, this is an old antique. Um, set of augers or post post hole augers I got this at a garage sale I had to do a little work on the handle but uh, pretty neat you able to use some antique uh, hardware now this particular auger works pretty good on on sand and uh, this is river silt here but doesn't work good in real rocky soil Okay, that's three feet and three inches. Now I'll put rock in here up to two and a half feet. I'm just putting some, this is called inch and a quarter crushed. That particular little bit of rock there doesn't have a whole lot of fines in it. And that's what I want. I want voids in the rock so it can collect water. I don't want to put too much rock in there 
So I'll have to take it back out. So we filled that in about four inches. That's two foot and five inches. So uh, once we set the pipe in, I can tap the pipe a little bit and it'll sink in there. The other tool that I had forgot to mention was extra water and extra bucket bucket to pack my rock and extra bucket for retrieving water so I can mix with the concrete and a level so we can make sure that the pole is straight up and down so once we set it in the concrete tape the bottom bit of the pipe here so I don't get concrete embedded into the threads of the pipe and then We'll stick the bottom section on, um, and I did put anti-seize on here off camera. So I'll just run the bottom up to the thread section. And then I might put just a little bit more tape on there because I want concrete to go up to that shoulder. So I'll wrap this nice and tight up against the, the pipe and the coupling. Now we're ready to drop the pipe into the hole. I just have to clean my tools up and uh, wait for that to dry for a day. Okay guys, uh, it's day two and the concrete is still green but I'm going to hang the ball, the tether ball now. But it's strong enough now to where the concrete's not going to move on you. If it had too much heavy duty play it, it might crack the concrete but at this point I really don't think so. But it's still a possibility, so I don't plan on doing a whole lot of playing on it. <laughs> I'm just going to tie the ball in place and uh, kind of see if it goes round and around a little bit generally. So here we go. If I fall off the ladder, you guys can be the first to see it. It'd be comedy hour for everybody. I looked around on the internet there a while back for looking for kits and and uh, I personally feel like you shouldn't go any smaller than that two and a three eighths inch outside diameter pole. That's just water pipe. You could probably get electrical conduit. I think you can get that a little cheaper. When I went ahead and ordered this, I was under the impression it was cheaper than the conduit, but <laughs> when I went to the cash register, it wasn't. So it was like. 
fifteen dollars more but anyway there it is fifteen dollars more is a pretty cheap price to pay for a few memories so uh, that's kind of where we're at with that pipe that pipe was like 126 dollars a stick um, I got had to get buy two sticks to get the part that goes into the ground uh, plus the cap I still have to drill a hole in the bottom of it for any weeping that might occur uh, during the winter time you know you see I put the gravel in there but could have groundwater that comes up in there and maybe plugs that from draining well in the future so just a little precaution I'll drill another hole in the bottom of this and so if it ever the water level ever gets up in the pipe and stands still and stagnant in a freezing situation that could actually bust the pipe I've seen that happen before so anyway uh, hope this helps you guys out if you're thinking about doing your own um, it's not rocket science it just takes a little work <laughs> so thanks for stopping by take care and God bless mm -hmm.